Hey folks, with the upcoming Alpha 3.15 patch, we're going to lose everything that we've bought in-game with Alpha UEC, since they're doing a wipe of everything that's stored in the long-term persistence database. Fortunately, uh, the fastest way to make money is still going to be by chaining bounty hunting missions. So I've made this video to show that you can easily complete the most profitable bounty hunting mission in the cheapest starter ship. I've already made a video showing off how well the Aurora MR can do VHRT, so check out the link in the description if that's where you're going to be restarting from. But here, we're going to be piloting the Mustang Alpha, so let's get into it. So here, uh, we've got our Mustang Alpha. We're equipped with FL Series laser cannons. We go with laser cannons over repeaters because we have a really agile, maneuverable ship, so we should be able to track our target pretty easily and therefore land these projectiles even though they're a little bit slower. Um, they have the same DPS as laser repeaters at the end of the day, but they take about half as much capacitor. So you'll basically be firing for two times as long before you need to recharge your, your energy ammo. And so you effectively do more DPS as long as you can land those shots. Um, one thing about the Mustang Alpha though is that since it's a starter ship like the Aurora, you have uh, not as much heat throughput, or cooling throughput, I should say, so that we do overheat our weapons as if we have sustained firing when we have all of our capacitors set to weapons. Uh, but that's not that big of a deal. Uh, we just try to manage it as best we can. The unfortunate thing is, though, that we do end up having to slow down our fire rate just for cooling purposes, not for energy recharge purposes. So that is what ends up limiting our DPS. Um, but as you can see here, we dispatched a warden really easily, and after we dispatched that warden, um, we also took out the the two allies. Or we've taken out one of the allies, the buccaneer that spawned in, and now we're about to annihilate this freelancer mist that has spawned in as well. Since we are so ultra agile, we're easily able to stay away from being in front of him. Uh, he's got a whole bunch of size 3 weapons on gimbals on his front, so we don't want to let him track us. So we just keep rotating around his sides, and we're pretty safe. Um, we're super agile, and so it's not too difficult to make sure that we stay inside that safer zone and just keep pummeling him as much as our ammo and our cooling allows. So here, we're up against the hardest target that you'll encounter in a VHRT bounty hunting mission, and that is, of course, the Anvil Hurricane. These guys have really high DPS, and they're extremely tanky, and they have a size 2 shield. Uh, and so what that means is they have a ton of hull HP, so it takes you a while to get through them anyway. And if you're unable to keep constant pressure on their shields, they'll be recharging a little bit of shields every here and there. So it just prolongs the fight even more. Uh, for this reason, it's really good to do your best to keep them in your sights and not lose track of them, but it's difficult. And it's especially difficult if you do what I did right there and love tap an asteroid. Fortunately, I realized my folly pretty quickly and immediately thrust downwards and away from the rock so that I can reorient myself and get back to it. Um, but you see, I took a bunch of damage and I'm a little bit flustered. I've run out of weapons and I've run out of shields and I slowly figure it out and readjust my power settings. So there we go. I put all my cap into shields and that's back and the cap is now back to weapons and I've reacquired my target and I'm going after him. I'm doing a pretty good job of taking an advantage of my agility here and staying on the inside of his turning radius so that I can keep uh, tabs on him at all times. Normally that's not really where you want to be because the turret is on the top side of the hurricane and that's one of the most dangerous sources of their DPS. But in that situation he didn't have a line on me and he wasn't attacking me so I was safe there and so I was able to do that. Ideally, if you can, you'd like to try and stay on the bottom side of him, and that'll keep you outside of the front fire of his uh, front fixed cannons and also outside of the line of fire of his top mounted turret. Um, but as you can see here, this, this fight is dragging on, and that's because as a starter ship, you're totally capable of taking out VHRT missions. Uh, I, with my cap management and my flying, you can see that I'm making progress here. He's starting to show damage on his hull in a couple places. Uh, but 
you you take some time to get there because your DPS is not the highest, but you eventually make it and as long as you are careful along the way to dodge the missiles with your decoys and also manage your capacitor to keep up max DPS with your laser cannons and also to keep your shields up, you, you do okay. And, and just in case it wasn't obvious, you also want to not smash yourself into asteroids. Here, I decide to just keep on fighting these other targets, uh, just for fun. If I was truly post-wipe and I was trying to make my money back as quickly as possible, as soon as I kill the bounty target, I would just immediately f align myself to an orbital marker and fly away, grab the next VHRT, and just keep grinding through those bounty targets. But since I'm just having fun here, I target both of the allies that have spawned in. One of them was a Hurricane and one of them was a Warden. So I go and target the Warden first to take him out because he's slower, he's got less HP, and he's just going to be a lot easier to kill. So you can see here, I'm not having too much of a hard time keeping him in my sights, and it's just a matter of time before he blows up. Then I target the Hurricane again pop off some decoys because the hurricane spam missiles a lot as soon as you get into missile range. Close the distance and now I'm going to do um, a good job of focusing on keeping him in my sights and not letting him regen shields and managing my, my capacitor to keep on weapons as much as possible. When I take, um, when, I, when I get my heat up to the point where I need to let my heat cool down a bit, I take that opportunity to take my capacitor off of weapons right there and I put it onto shields to recharge my shields even though they didn't really need recharging, just because what's the point of recharging my weapons if I can't fire them anyway? And then as soon as the shields are back, I put my cap back to weapons. Once again, you can see here I've been managing to stay on the inside of the of the circle that the hurricane is flying so I'm just keeping constant pressure on him right there he tried to swim around me again but I managed to stay on the inside of him and since I've done a really good job this time of keeping him in my sights and not letting him get away from me I'm able to take him off pretty quick so after fighting two hurricanes at once I take a look at the damage um, and the funny thing is that most of this damage was self-inflicted by running into an asteroid. My shields never actually fully went down while fighting the Hurricanes, so you can totally pull this off in the Mustang Alpha starter ship. So last thing we want to look at here is uh, the fit that we used for this video. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we basically swapped all our weapons for FL series laser cannons. You could use any laser cannon, they're all pretty much the same. The FL series have a slight advantage because they don't have weapon spread. Um, and I think they might actually even be cheaper than some of the other ones as well. But any, any laser cannon is fine, just use whatever you have that fits. Uh, I went all fixed here because you aren't really getting much benefit from gimbals in the current iteration of the game because of various things on the back end like latency. Um, so fixed works fine and the Mustang Alpha is definitely agile enough to take advantage of it. As far as the other components, I swapped out the power plants and the shields for stealth components. You don't really need to do the shields because they're kind of expensive, but the power, pan the power plants is a nice to have because it, it contributes a lot to your EM and IR signatures, so getting a stealth power plant will help you a bunch. The quantum drive, I've swapped to the Atlas quantum drive because it's a great mix of being able to go a long distance and also being pretty quick. Um, so that's the size one quantum drive I use on all of my size one quantum drive ships. And that's it for the Mustang Alpha. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Cheers!